Hey everyone, Grzegorz Baron here. There are a few main steps we need to follow to create a PBR material from 3D scan. One of these steps is to build an object we can use to transfer three-dimensional data into two-dimensional texture set, which when combined together become a PBR material. And this is the video about it. There are many tools we can use for this purpose, but let's focus on one, which I currently consider as the best choice. The Blender. The process where we convert this three-dimensional data into two-dimensional space is called a texture baking. But for baking to happen, we need to select which exact part of three-dimensional model we want to bake and how that part should be wrapped in further two-dimensional space. And for this exact reason, for each 3D scan, we need to build a dedicated, a simplified low-poly model and align it with the high-poly one for future data projection. The consistency of the information transferred into two-dimensional texture depends on this exact low-poly canvas model's coverage and its alignment details. We need to understand that the actual projection angle during baking process is defined by the direction angle of individual low-poly model faces. Two-dimensional coverage depends on its actual coverage in 3D space as well as UV mapping coordinates of of the low poly model used. So the key thing at this stage is to create a low poly model and align it with the 3D model, the way which allows us to project all three dimensional information in the cleanest possible way, utilizing as much UV space as possible. There are many tools we can use for this stage. Basically, any 3D software can do the job, but some can do it better to others and some cheaper to others. In recent years, I found ZBrush being a very handy tool as it was designed to handle quite heavy geometry and had set of useful auto alignment tools. Unfortunately at some point I decided to find a cheaper alternative solution and this is where the Blender kicks in. After a few weeks of using Blender I found it and its default alignment tooling very useful if not even better to what ZBrush offers. And to be honest I can't really find any reason to go back to ZBrush for this exact job anymore. Not to mention, Blender doesn't flip any UVs like for some reason ZBrush does. Auto alignment tools Blender offers are even more powerful and handy to this ZBrush has. Neither ZBrush nor the Blender can handle very heavy geometry. I'm talking about single 100 million poly heavy meshes, which are not unusual when it comes to scanned data. I mean, ZBrush still handles heavy geometry better, but only really when split into subtools and for sculpting. When it comes to single individual meshes, there is no much difference. So ZBrush can handle 300 million poly heavy scene made of 30, 10 million heavy objects and still be functional, which in my opinion Blender definitely can't, but both crash at the same way when trying to load a single very heavy object. This is why regardless if I use ZBrush or Blender, after I create the main heavy geometry using photogrammetry, usually about 100 million poly heavy one, I always create additional medium poly version, usually between 6 to 15 million polys, which I use just for low poly model creation and its alignment. I create this medium poly version simply by decimating a heavy poly model down in photogrammetry app to mention 6 to 15 million polys, and this is light enough for any 3D app to handle, and it's still dense and heavy enough to carry all necessary visual information, useful for visual interpretation, navigation and low poly alignment. Not to mention that Blender is totally free for everyone. And these are reasons I decided to drop ZBrush and replace it with Blender in my photogrammetry workflow. In this video, I'm going to present you this exact part of the workflow, but with Blender instead of ZBrush. First, let's dive into some theory. The low poly model is basically a three-dimensional canvas through which we project two-dimensional texture information from the high poly model. So for square textures, the best fit would be use of square-shaped low poly model. The coverage of UV space defines the exact distribution of 2D information within the canvas space, so it should be even, unstretched and possibly square to fill as much space as possible so there is no much space wasted. When set, we should do our best to 
keep those proportions intact, as otherwise we risk some stretching glitches. The coverage of the low poly canvas over the high poly geometry should represent the physical size we want the final texture to represent. So if we capture 3 by 3 meters of surface and we want the texture to be just 2 by 2 meters, we need to cover just 2 by 2 meters of this 3 by 3 meters large space. Since in most cases I build my materials to cover about 2 by 2 meters, exactly 180 by 180 centimeters, I scale this plane to the designated physical coverage first and then move it around to pick the best spot without any further scale change. The actual scale can be very subjective and hard to estimate out of context. I mean, sometimes it's really impossible to tell if something is 1 meter long or 2 meters long or just 10 centimeters or 100 meters, especially when seen without any environment context. I mean, without objects our mind usually use as a scale reference like trees, animals, humans, footsteps, buildings. This is why it can be very useful to capture some documentary images during each capture, as well as include some objects we can use as a scale reference later. The best scale reference I can imagine is probably the ruler, as it doesn't leave any space for any scale misinterpretation and this is why most of my scans contain rulers extended to certain length. I also often capture documentary images with my shoe on it, but these mostly for high reference when setting the material's height. Sometimes when I scan very large objects or for some reason I cannot include the ruler, I try to include myself in some documentary pictures as I know my height and can use it for further referencing. Physical scale consistency between materials really matters, especially that in 3D worlds we create, we use many of them together, and incorrect scale or lack scale consistency immediately breaks the immersion for the viewer as it feels off. The next thing which really matters where it comes to the low poly model alignment is the cross surface alignment. This part has significant impact on the height map and if well done can make further steps, especially seam removal, smooth and easy, but if mishandled it can be a real pain. It is about an actual 3D alignment across the entire surface. The more folded and irregular the surface, the more challenging this part is. To understand this part we need to know what is the purpose of the height information in our materials and which part of it is useful for us and which we want to utilize. Basically, the first and probably one of the most critical things which comes to materials is that we need our materials to tile and don't have visible seams on materials edges. It is really hard to tie material when one side is totally different to the opposite one. To avoid such cases, our low poly canvas should be aligned and follow the overall surface form. So the average distance between the low poly canvas and the high poly model should be consistent across the surface, without any extreme spikes up or down, especially around low poly plane edges, as these are areas we need to tile. So what we usually expect from the height map is to carry medium level of height information, not the large one as this one should be carried by the final geometry the material is meant to be applied to, but also not too detailed as the detail should be driven by the normal map. To make it happen our low poly coverage should not be too simple but also not too detailed. Of course it differs by case and depends on the subject and the purpose of material we want to generate but overall the low poly plane should be pretty smooth and averaged along the surface it covers. Last but not least since, as mentioned, the baking process depends on the orientation of faces in relation to the high poly model and the actual projection angle is defined by the normals direction of individual polygon faces, if our geometry has flat smoothing, every single face brings projection from fixed angle when compared to the neighbor face. By smoothing all normals we apply an average projection direction across the entire low poly canvas geometry. With flat shading, hard smoothing groups and the geometry not being perfectly flat, 
all geometry edges imprint the area where projection angle changes, therefore kind of imprints all geometry edges on the baked texture. By setting the geometry shading to be smooth, we also smooth the projection angle across geometry, and this way we get an average and smooth bake result without any geometry based imprints. In Blender we can do that by hitting right mouse button on the object and selecting Shade Smooth from the context menu. This is a kind of emphasized comparison of normal map baked using the same low poly model as baking canvas but with smoothed geometry and a flat unsmoothed one. And even if sometimes it isn't as obvious, it's still there. So let's always make sure to keep our geometry shading smooth. And I think this is all we need to know before proceeding to the next step. An actual low poly creation and low poly alignment in Blender. Let's open Blender and clean up the space so nothing bothers us here. We can do it simply by selecting everything in a scene and hitting delete button. Next, let's import the light medium version of the high poly geometry we generated before for this exact reason into Blender. In this case, a 6 million poly dense proxy version of the 110 million poly heavy original model. Even with just 6 million polys, it takes a while to get it loaded in, but when done, it's still light enough to do not cause any navigation issues. I wouldn't recommend loading too heavy models as it takes a lot of time and even when happens and 3D application doesn't crash, it's still usually barely possible to navigate with them loaded. So when I create a high poly model in photogrammetry app, I always create an additional decimated to about 6 million polys copy of it. In Metashape it can be done from tools tab using decimate mesh option. We need to put the number we want the mesh to be decimated to there and hit the OK button. If we want to keep both original and a decimated one, which I would recommend, we should say no when the app asks us if we want to replace the model we are decimating. And in no time we get our temporary medium poly model to work with in 3D apps for low poly alignment. This model, when loaded to the 3D app later, can be used as a proxy model of our super heavy one we would struggle to even load. And what's the most important is that it's always positioned in exactly same 3D space as the heavy one. Since default shading preview in Blender doesn't show vertex colors even when generated, we can preview them on our medium poly model by activating attribute color type view from the side menu. Color preview can be very helpful when it comes to visual navigation, especially when we try to recognize certain surface features. Now, since we want to project three-dimensional information into two-dimensional form, we need to create a low poly canvas we can use later to transform all that 3D information into a set of two-dimensional textures. We can do it by pressing Shift and A to bring object menu and pick the plane from there. Or do the same using Add from the top tab. This way we get just two polygons heavy low poly square plane in the middle of the Blender scene. This exact plane is going to be used as our low poly canvas to bake PBR data later. The plane should be already UV unwrapped by default and its UV should fill entire available UV space as we want to. As said, this space defines the actual projection coverage within the further texture. Now we need to adjust the plane to cover our proxy model for baking. The first thing is the scale. Since I want it to cover 180 by 180 80 centimeters, and this is the exact distance both rulers were unfolded into, I'm going to use these rulers when defining the plane size. The top view seems to be the best view for it. By pressing G we switch into move mode where we can move the plane around. S changes the mode to scale which allows us to scale the plane up and down. R swaps navigation into rotation mode. If for some reason we want to see through this plane we can change its opacity in objects properties. In viewport display section we need to change the alpha value of object's color to whatever value works for us the best. 
Next is the time to align the plane with the high poly proxy model. The best way for initial alignment is to use move, button G and rotation, button R. It is up to us if we use shortcuts or menu buttons. I personally prefer shortcuts as it speeds up navigation a lot. Anyway, as you can see, the chunk of terrain isn't flat and is a bit curved, which makes our alignment slightly more challenging. As you remember, our goal is to align our low poly plane the way it follows high poly model's curvature, as otherwise we are going to get height map gradients mentioned during the introduction, which will make further seam removal unnecessarily more challenging than it can actually be. Our plane is currently made of a single polygon and four vertices, so to align it properly we need to make this geometry a bit denser, so we have a bit more control points. We can do it by entering the geometry edit mode by hitting tab, this way we can select individual vertices or plane. Next let's hit the A button to select all within this edit mode, right click on any face and subdivide it from the context menu. It is certainly not enough points to wrap our plane along the high poly model, so let's divide it again. I think that might work. We don't want too many of these points, as with too many of them, alignment gets trickier. Especially, we also don't want them to be snapped to the individual grass blades during the further automate projection. Simply, geometry with less vertices makes overall alignment easier, and if we still need more, nothing stops us to add more later. Especially, that increased subdivision doesn't affect the UV space. Now it's the best time to adjust and automate the alignment. For this purpose we can use the shrink wrap tool, which is kind of similar to the projection one ZBrush offers, especially when it comes to geometry snapping. Let's pick modifiers tab and bring the shrink wrap modifier from there. Next let's set the parameters. We want our mesh to be projected over the other model. As we want to limit the projection axis to top-down angle, we need to activate only the one which works for us. We can check the right axis referring to the navigation gizmo, in our case it's Z-axis, and activate it in modifier options. Next, let's activate the negative and positive projection, so vertices will snap from both sides of the mesh, from up and from the bottom. Next, let's pick our alignment target, our proxy model, and that's it. The low poly model clearly lacks geometry for proper alignment in the most curved area of the captured surface, so we should increase the subdivision level once more. And I think the job is done. We can play with other options in here if needed until we get what we want. In practice, shrink warp can be really very handy when it comes to more complex and more rocky like shapes. For this grass I used it just to present that there is such option available. When done we can apply changes made on modifier and additionally readjust vertices manually if needed. As mentioned during the introduction, to make sure we don't get sharp edge based imprint lines coming from fixed direction of individual face normals, we should set geometry smoothing as smooth. And this is really everything. Now we can export our low poly model as another FBX file. Just please be careful to not export everything by accident. So with our low poly model selected, select export, find location where we want to our model to be stored, limit export to selected objects only, so we don't export the heavier geometry too. Next let's set scaling as FBX all, otherwise scale of our low poly object will be off and the bake will fail and turn black. And voila! I also recommend to save the blender scene in case I need to readjust the low poly model for some reason later. Next, as usual, we need to bring our low poly model to Baker, in this case to Substance Designer, select the main high poly model as a source data for baking and let the baking app do the PBR baking job. I used to use many 3D apps over years and I have to admit that I really enjoy Blender. As 
especially that it feels so stable in this unpredictable, competitive and constantly changing world. Like every other app out there, it has its own issues and still quite steep learning curve, but at the same time it grows so quickly and has so much to offer. I would definitely recommend taking some time to get familiar with Blender, especially that it's totally free for everyone and by downloading it we are getting long life license to use it forever. ZBrush is still the king when it comes to detail sculpting, but Blender is quickly catching up. Anyway, since I don't really want to make this video longer than it is already, let's finish it here. I hope you enjoyed it and found something useful in here. If you did and want me to create even more content like this one, please hit the thumbs up, drop a comment and subscribe to my channel. Thanks to all of you who did it already. See you all next time. Bye!